Well, continuing our conversation on the recommendations of the Northern Leaders meeting, which held yesterday, uh, some of which included uh, regulating or censoring social media. They use them interchangeably to ensure that uh, some elements don't hijack it. Well, they equally also had concerns about subversive elements who took advantage of the NSAS protest. And then they also spoke about the traditional media, giving them some other roles to play other than what we've seen. So and now we've got a Hamza Lawal, campaigner and chief executive of Connected Development uh, at CODE. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, it's not the first time that we're hearing about calls to regulate or censor social media. They highlight different challenges about uh, fake news, bully, cyberbullying and the likes. Well, you heard all this narrative before. But this time around, uh, Northern leaders equally back in the fact that something needs to be done. What do you think now about this? Good morning, Chamberlain, and, and thank you for having me. Um, you know, it's quite sad and unfortunate that we're using quality airtime to talk about the regulation of social media when we're supposed to invest this time and energy and our effort to talk about the numbers of our school children or the fact that a lot of Nigerians don't have access to quality healthcare or lifestyle. But that being said, I think we need to be clear that the Norton rulers, I would say the Norton rulers have met and have come up with a regulation, uh, come up with resolution that we should regulate social media. Again, you know, when um, old people come together and, and they don't understand something, instead of them to try to understand or go and learn about it, and because they are scared, then they think that the best solution is to gag the voice of citizen in a democracy. Chamberlain, this is a democracy where people are meant to express themselves. They've talked about uh, worries about fake news. Um, I believe we have existing laws and regulations that helps to tackle fake news. And again, it shows that, you know, our rulers are not looking at the future because you're in power today and because you don't want citizens to criticize the fact that you're not delivering on your promises on democracy. And then you want to guard their voice and, and stamp, stamp upon their right to access to freedom of expression. So again, for me, it is really sad that, you know, we're talking about social media regulation. You know, this is not the first, second or third time. They would keep coming with this frivolous um, uh, conversation of- You know, the or, question, the question you know, then is, what is it that we're missing? Or what is it that they are missing? We're talking about these things consistently. So is it that they've got a point to make that other citizens or younger generation don't see or is it that they have refused to just see it from the perspective of the younger generation? So how do we connect that or reconcile it? Well, the thing is our rulers have seen young people as threats. They've not seen young people as part of the solution and they've not That's been into the intergenerational dialogue and intergenerational uh, conversation. Uh, again, um, the older people uh, our leaders are meant to focus on the platform and the people who provide this platform. Why are we not talking about conversation about how government would ensure that Twitter, Facebook, and other social media platforms are able to put in place stronger policies? And then when people on their platform uh, amplify fake news, then you, you ensure that the platform itself, you, you find the platform and even generate revenue from it. Because the platform is the one who is providing, you know, the, this social media companies are the ones providing the platform for citizens to engage. So if you find any citizen wanting, you prosecute them and take them to court. And then you also find, you know, the social media platform for ensuring that, uh, for, for giving a voice to someone who is amplifying fake news. So we should focus more on, you know, the providers of the social media platform, not the citizens, not the users. Well, uh, Mr. Lawal, ju just a moment uh, of uh, consideration of something. One of the things that's been on the front burner every time they talk about 
doing something with the social media, as Chamberlain said, censorship or regulating. No, not what <laughs> That's the word the governor is using in the meeting. Okay, well, well, okay, well you're right, because uh, the minister on, uh, was it yesterday, he was talking about censorship. The uh -huh. governor was talking about, you know, um, uh, the, gov the minister was talking about regulating, the governor was talking about censorship. Now, uh, but the concern for them has always been that of fake news and hate speech. From your perspective, how relevant, how significant is that concern in all of this talk about regulating or censoring social media in Nigeria? Fake news and hate speech um, is a big problem for us. Uh, yes, we must not shy away of the fact that some people have used the social media platform negatively. And we must understand that this is a platform where people would use positively or negatively. Yes, it beckoned on government to ensure that, you know, this platform are used to pro promote unity and peaceful coexistence. Uh, but then again, you cannot rule a country based on propaganda because why are we having as much agitation as much miscommunication, misinformation that we have. It's because government itself is not proactive to provide timely information. And in any case, when they provide information, most of this information are not accurate enough. They're not well informed and they're not backed with evidence or data. So I believe that there's an opportunity here. I, I, I say there's an opportunity here where we can have more dialogue and more conversation, but most importantly, have conversations that inform data and that have evidence fake news hate speech and when you have a policy that is tensed and then when you have a policy that is now geared towards 2023 i tell you for free this social media gag you know this censorship or regulation it's all geared towards 2023 you know and we need to look beyond 2023 we cannot yeah, because Hamza, of elections what, what, what makes you say that that is geared towards 2023 it is obvious. It is obvious because, see, what we've had, you know, what we've experienced in the past six years, it's more about government propaganda. And then when you don't have evidence to show what you have done and the promises you have made and how you've kept this promise, then you need to find a way to gag the voice. First, you know, Chamberlain, they came from mainstream media. Uh, and I know that they've already hit you guys, you know, with three million naira. And now they're coming for social media. Social media is a platform where everyone can express themselves freely. And again, this is a democracy. 2023, so Nigeria would live and survive, you know, above 2023. So again, we need leaders that look beyond 2023. It's everything, all the conversation. Because today, not, Northern Nigeria is not secured. Chamberlain, you cannot travel 200 kilometers without the scale of being kidnapped. But here we are. Northern leaders sitting and meeting at the uh, Kashim Ibrahim house. We were hoping they were going to talk about, you know, secure Northern Nigeria because the young people leading this campaign on Twitter. But rather they're talking about stiffening the voice of these young people, talking about ensuring, you know, adequate security for lives and property in yeah. Northern Nigeria and the country at large. So this entire conversation, Chambali, I tell you for free, you don't have to pay me. It's about 2023. So, speaking about uh, young people, now, it did appear uh, that as though young people in the South, their experience in, in, with SARS and security is different from their uh, counterparts in the North. Because someone thought that, uh, look, they didn't seem to understand the experiences that some Southerners have with SARS because they thought it's not the same thing. So speak to us about that. So why is it that well, you had some people up north who just felt, no, well, we don't have that kind of experience. So it was difficult to kind of understand some story from a different perspective as though it was politically motivated. Um, Chamberlain, people from the north who came publicly on social media and said they were not experiencing the same level of police brutality were sponsored. These people were sponsored. Chamberlain, I've traveled on the road across Nigeria. I've experienced first-hand police brutality in the north and the south and the west and then the east. And maybe I should focus this conversation on the, on the uh, uh, east and, and the south. For every 10 meters, there's a police checkpoint in the southwest, uh, in the east and south. Sadly, these checkpoints are not checking if you're carrying contraband, but they're extorting citizens. 
citizens, and when I say citizens, these are people who live below, you know, one dollar a day, people who are struggling. When you look at genuine people who have come out to even share experience about police brutality, a lot of people from northern Nigeria have also shared their experiences, you know. I, I, some of our family members are traders, and we know what they experience traveling around the north when they move goods and services around, and then police harass them and ask them, you know, for bribe or ask them for 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 handout. So, so again, you know, you have people, you know, pain influencers, and you have people who are mischief makers and who are carrying misinformation and saying that the experiences in the south is different from the north. It is one and the same. By the way, where in Nigeria is safe? Let's tell ourselves the truth. Can you get on your car and travel from Lagos down to Eboi and then travel to Zanfara? And you won't be scared that you might either get kidnapped or get attacked by armed robbers on the road. Speaking of which, is the road even more terrible? Well, uh, our Raf Sanjani also joins us in this conversation now. Let's see how much of him we can take. Thank you for joining us, um, Sir Raf Sanjani. So this whole conversation about um, what the northern governors have said, particularly the one that you know, talks about the regulation or control mechanism and censorship of the social media space in Nigeria. How do you see that playing out in the first place? I think, um, thank you very much, Assembly. I think this is a very wishful thinking. If anybody thinks that um, uh, Nigerians should not expose corruption, so injustice and you know all sort of uh, things that is making governance not work. I think that person is you know is better go and have a rethink about it because the world has moved on. And those who think that um, by this creative or by hiding uh, information, they will uh, be able to suppress and repress views of Nigerians. I think that era is gone. No amount of um, control or regulation that will make Nigerians not know or not expose wrongdoing. So if the intention is to undermine access to information and freedom of information and also expose corruption and wrongdoing, uh, like many of the people in authority who always want to have, I think they are just wasting their time. So they better focus on governance and do things that you know they can be remembered for good. But to come and say that you will want to control and uh, regulate, you know, you in the first place have you regulated yourself? You are engaging in all sorts of wasteful, all sorts of um, videos, you know, projects, all sorts of uh, uh, impunity, and you don't want Nigerians to expose that. I think that that is this very deceptive. So, do you, in, in your opinion, opinion Mr. Asanjani? Uh, well, and at to that opinion, this one, or perspe your perspectives on this one, which is the fact that uh, the reasons being adduced to, for, for trying to regulate or you know, put up mechanisms for um, regulating the social media space in Nigeria is about fake news and hate speech and on and on like that. For you, I mean, we've had conversations on that all day, all morning, but for you, is that significant? How significant is it? The truth is that, um, you know, no responsible and reasonable and reasonable media outlet that will want to promote, um, you know, fake news or you know, news that or information that is not authentic. Oh, dear. Well, let's get back to uh, Mr. Lawal while we try to get Mr. Sanjani back. Now, uh, you've worked, uh, Mr. Hamzat Lawal, you've worked in the environments where many people's voices are not heard. They're underserved in, uh, in various communities across a number of African countries, no less a, a place as Nigeria as well. You referenced something the other time about the fact that uh, there are a good number of states in the north who are having issues, uh, who are underserved, who are living below the poverty line, they are margaries and all of those things. 
why don't we have such issues as prominent in the social media space as many other issues being raised in the, in, in the South? Just one moment. That's for Mr. Lawal. Please go ahead, Mr. Lawal. We've, we've yeah. actually had and yeah. led conversation about issues about insecurity, about out of school children, Al Majorinchi. You know, we've had this conversation. Uh, but then again, you would not say um, citizens should be the one to champion the delivery of this conversation. We've elected government into office. We all cannot, you know, run for office. We all cannot get appointed into public office. But we have entrusted our mandate collectively to President Muhammad Buhari, to 36 state governors, you know, to state assembly members and federal lawmakers for a reason, for them to bring about solutions for them to bring about ideas. And we're playing our roles as civil society leaders, as activists and campaigners. You know, we're leaving our comfort zone and going to various grassroots communities to collect voices, to document voices and, and amplify these voices, you know, trying to influence policy and decision making. So, you know, we, are, we have a government and it's the responsibility of government to work with citizens, unite citizens and bring about the solutions that are sustained. You know, now we're talking about Agenda 2063. We're talking about uh, Agenda 2030. You know, we're talking about where would Nigeria be in the next decade of action, you know. So now is the time to take action. So we've had this conversation, you know. Maybe we've not had them enough. I agree. Maybe we've not had them enough. But we've had this conversation. And again, you need to also understand that there's high level of bond rates. What, what do I mean? When you have this conversation and there's high expectation on government, and then you, government does not act over time. What happens is a lot of citizens will go back to their shop. Right now, a lot of citizens are their own electricity provider. A lot of citizens are their own, you know, water board in their various homes. You know, a lot of citizens are providing personal security for themselves. So this is a failure of governance. We must call it what it is. And see, I will tell you again, the problem, uh, uh, you know, the problem is a political problem. And the solution must be a political solution. And that's why I tell you, all this conversation about regulating free speech, it's about 2023. Because again, politics define and decide everything in Nigeria. Sadly so. Because after our campaign and electioneering period, we're supposed to now talk about governance and unite both the ruling and opposition together because Nigeria have brought all of us under this umbrella. But... We continue politicking. You know, we don't know where to draw the line between governance and politics and the public policy. So again, you know, it's government. Government must unite, must lead this conversation and ensure that they inspire because the, the role of leadership is to inspire. And right now, yeah. you and I are not being inspired by the actions of government. What do you say to those who are of the view that uh, perhaps, you know, the Northern leaders haven't seen that much resistance as to... Uh, their quest to censor social media, and that's why they think that they, they have that huge consensus or support to go ahead and regulate social media. The northern leaders and our rulers are living in a world of their own, and they think there is no, you know, they, they feel that there is no much, uh, you know, uh, uh, agitation or there's no much rejection of this proposed regulation or censorship. It would shock them like we say it will take them by surprise see you know you are trying to gag the voice of pe people who have collectively given you their mandate and entrusted you into public office and then you're saying that the biggest uh, the biggest concern for you is to stiffen their voice it would really shock them um when it hits them that you know young people particularly young people from their region would not accept this you know Mischief makers would definitely cash in on this. And, you know, you have people around them who are sacrifants who tell them that they are the best thing that have happened to Nigeria after Jollof rice. It would really you, shock them. What and do you I think will happen they if they leave. go ahead? What do I think would happen? If they proceed, well, yes. If they proceed, what do I think would happen? Citizens mm -hmm. would rise. You know, yes, a couple of weeks ago, we saw how young people united and organized themselves peacefully under the NSAS protest. 
that is the tip of the iceberg. If they if they go ahead and try to gag social media and the, and still put in the voice of citizen, then citizen would rise. Because again, before you form a government, it is the citizen that actually form the government. Legitimacy, it's in the hands of the citizen. And if they continue, citizen would take back that legitimacy. And then hopefully we would not have rulers who would put Nigeria in chaos. I believe that young people are relatively and generally peaceful and they will continue to undertake their role as active citizens peacefully, but then they should not be pushed to the wall because right now it's about survival and even with the impact of COVID-19. So you can't come with a policy that guards the voice. Rather, come with a policy that guarantees quality lifestyle, access to healthcare, you know, access to employment and jobs, sustainable jobs and decent jobs, and economic growth. You know, let's grow the GDP. Let's make Nigeria proud rather than discussing social media. Other countries are talking about focusing on, you know, the big data company, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, but you are focusing on your citizen to shut them up. Who does that? Mr. Sanjani, so this is how far we have come, and uh, the implications are quite uh, right there in our faces. If we are to get past this, on the part of the citizens, what should we do? On the part of government, what needs to be done? Mr. Afsanjani, can you hear me? Okay, well, maybe your mic is on mute or something, but if you can yeah. unmute it, no. fine. Yes, no, go no, ahead, please. I can hear you now. I, I can hear you now. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, I said on the part of government, this is how far we have come as a people. On the part of the people, there is a job yes. to do. On the part of the government, there is a job to do. We've been talking about what government should or should not do. But what's there for the citizens to do, really? And what, how should they, the, the government respond? Okay, I think... Uh, Every decent and responsible patriotic Nigerian should behave responsibly. And when you have any information, before you circulate it, you need to verify. Because there's implication, you know, for that. There are some people who will deliberately want to cause mayhem and want to, you know, trigger violence and conflict. So if you are a peace-loving person, you, you did not need to share or spread, you know, news that is not authentic that is not verifiable. If you do that, you know, you know that you are actually not doing what you're supposed to do as, as, as part of your civic responsibility as a responsible and patriotic student. That's one. Number two, there should be also repercussion, you know, or, or consequences. If you do anything, you know, against anybody, that person, you know, can take you to court. Uh, so therefore, there's a repercussion, there's a legal consequences of anybody who deliberately you know, create mischief with a view to undermine or to create, you know, um, this harmony or growth about uh, crisis. So definitely every reasonable and responsible Danny, person These are things, that. I so, think that these are part of the things that, you know, government is perhaps talking about when they say that they want to regulate the social media, that there should be consequences for such actions as you have painted out. So are you validating, aren't you in this way validating what government intends to do? No, oh, I am validating the fact that you don't need to be a, in a government for somebody to actually you know, undermine or to create any uh, things that will you know, uh, bring about you know, uh, discomfort or just undermine your integrity. So it is individually, you can go to court if somebody comes to malign your character and you believe that he, he has no, he or she has no any valid reason to do that. You can go and seek redress. It doesn't need government here. What the governors are trying to do is simply is to catch people, is to censor people, and that cannot work. Because even if you say you want to regulate social media in the north, how will you be able to regulate the social media in the other parts of the country and also in the world globally? Now we are in the modern technology. We don't need to be in Nigeria to operate social media. So I think some of the people that are even thinking this way, they are so backwarded that they don't even understand how the world works now. It's because people just think that they can sit down and come up with policy. And let me also tell you, it is the same politicians who are actually spreading fake news. Just what during the campaign. Look at how they deform the character of one another. Look at how they also present 
fake videos, you know, existing projects as part of achievement. And this is the reason why many of them, they think that they just need to censor, they need to, you know, block people from expressing their opinion, which is contrary to the law. Look, the constitution of Nigeria is very clear. Nigerians, Nigerians are entitled to express their views and opinion. And if that views, somebody thinks that, you know, should not be expressed, I think it is just a sheer lack of understanding of the constitutional and human rights of such kind of person. So I want to advise those who are thinking that they can actually even impose anything. They cannot impose it because they are the greater breaker of, you know, those kind of uh, policy. When All right, they then. To do campaign, they malign one another. They All right, we, we, we get your point, Awal. Uh, we, we, we need to anchor at that point. Uh, our of Sanjani, executive director of CISLAC, as well as uh, uh, Hamza Lawal, who is the chief campaign and campaigner, beg your pardon, and chief executive of Connected Development Co. Gentlemen, thank you for talking to us this morning.